and we'll be talking uh, about wellness, being a veteran, and professional athlete space. Um, and we're going to have a really interesting discussion with uh, Kyle Turley, a former NFL veteran, Brian Buckley, a Purple Heart veteran, and um, the head of business development and research of NIMIT, who was spearheading a lot of campus research in the space. And hopefully, you can share a little tidbit about that. So, uh, I'll put really it to myself. My name is Julia Wood. I'm the founder of the group. It is a creative and um, consulting collective. I'm also a media sales director and a member of the Cannabis Chamber of Commerce. And then I'm going to pass over to Kyle, because he is the first one to my right, uh, to introduce himself before we start with questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Kyle Turnley, um, NFL veteran, but plenty uh, famed for San Diego, a former Aztec. I uh, was at San Diego State, 93, but I was seven, so maybe the Aztecs house. And um, uh, went from here in the NFL, had a tenure career from 1998 to 2007. Uh, obviously, I don't think anybody uh, has. Uh, believe that anybody just walks away from the sport football after 10 years so it's uh let me away at best and uh the uh, stories that all the warriors you see in the thing here uh, is the story i have and canvas fixed all of that so that's why i'm here and uh that canvas saved my life so i've already tried to talk about that for the last 10 years since that experience happened and uh, uh i'm just uh happy grateful to be here i appreciate you thank you Hi, good evening. I'm uh, Brian Leatherly, uh, founder of the Medallia Rowers Company and also founder of a nonprofit called Battle Brothers Foundation. I served in the United States Marine Corps in about nine years. Started off in the infantry. I've been deployed to Fallujah, Iraq. Played back at that and the CS1 Marine Reconnaissance. Put right back by Iraq six months later. And then when I came back from that deployment, we were starting off our special operations side, uh, now known as Marine Raiders. Uh, so I went to selection, came back, did a team commander, uh, and spent five years doing that, going to uh, Africa, the South East Asia, <laughs> and then uh, Andy Stan. Um, got to get out of us, and did some on time, and I haven't revealed. Uh, but I still got shrouded and self in my body. I would have walked out of the military after I was disabled. Really was just kind of struggling with life for a while. And then in 2016, I was there as cannabis. And when I tried this person, I got one night of sleep and they kept working. And I'm like, well, what's the deal with here? Why can I use the EA get 15 pills and drop a hat? Yet I was having this little cannabis product that's like really soft and everything. So I had an opportunity to meet with some members of the United States Congress and said, what do you guys eat? And they were like, oh, wait, dad, go get American doctors. And I was fortunate enough to walk into the, the team at Niabetic um, doing amazing research over in Israel, came on North America at uh, you know, 16, 17 time frame. Uh, we were able to work with them. We were able to be one of us, they called an institutional review board, which falls underneath the FDA, which is using the nuclear for achieving trials. And once we kind of get back going, do a study here in California, where early off with the uh, do a the follow up study in Colorado with the VA system. Then that I'll be round some deep. I'll go back to my founders for eight point right hand, say, here's your data, here's your American doctors, going receiving that K trials with the NC getting our medical product into the VA system, thus making the medical candidates federal deal. So really excited what you get talking with me and then share our story and our reach out. So thank you very much. Hi Bawani and Vivi. My name is Dan Brownski. I'm the head of business development and operation for Yamedic, which is an Israeli American company that is conducting cannabis research. That's one of my cannabis hands. I also own a cannabis company in Nebraska that provides cannabis services for private events. And I also propose to produce uh, a cannabis podcast for a instrument listener from Cat to Kush podcast. I'm here today to talk about Neomedic's work and why we need more research, more cannabis research. Thank you. Okay, so you guys have already answered the first question about how you got into cannabis. So this is really, well, this is really more, <laughs> Dan, sorry. Sorry, Brad, I'm just saving you a little coaching. Uh, 
So this is really for anyone up here, but what, from your own perspectives, right, have you felt like the biggest effects are on the human body when it comes to these high impact events, mom, and physically, whether that's playing in the NFL or uh, fighting in combat? I don't know the ones to take first, but. I mean. And uh, again, and the question is, how does this apply, right? Um, and so my experience personally, obviously, is you know, when you find your strain, it's a nut. Uh, so we're like 400 body strains again, it's up and down and rolling. Um, the hybridization process, all these things that go from all those journeys and all these other things that happen in the that really matter. And so my personal experience of so going down the line, can't lose the first true California is uncocked to uh, about 10 years ago. So with all the indicators, found SNPO genes and some of these others that really help them start to mediate and position. And then decided to go to some people world and then slowly but surely and then one day boom and that was it so for me it was a true you know experience of uh, certain strains that are unbelievably medicinal that speak to my body that fits systematically out and then from there then after the one solution to that then learning more and more and more and trying to apply it and then understand the camp on the system in the cars as the level work aims with Tory system in the human body. Once you understand that, that that's the number one, then you know where to go. Because when you take the car and get fixed, if you don't want to check the computer, then how are you supposed to know what's wrong with the car? So, uh, yeah, you're just fixing them with update, but all of a sudden means, uh, you know, might as well be. Well, and you yeah, will be back in the shop over and over again. So where do you have to start? It's at the beginning of the camera was just to like help understand why is this happening to me? How is this plan that they are saying is so bad? You know, and Mitch Graham would expect with things, fixing uh, neuropathy, uh, light sensitivity, vertigo, seizures, all these real arthritic pain issues, like uh, sciatica and all these other things to the back injury was about a sewer for these. And they completely resolve it, not just legally in many cases. And then applying our, our SOA to uh, all the other huge uh, things that are taught you we've seen about how high can we get and put us on the under. And then I say, are you, you know, in the very early need to go with that as medicine and completely resolve issues that pharmaceuticals that's could even touch, can't touch, still to this day. Um, and so, by continuing that path. Yeah, I think, um, you know, what I'll share is a lot of times I had, like, you know, patients of haunt me that are very kind of interested in this whole bit today, you know, really know what they should do, how to go about it. So I always just tell them, like, let's do, go slow and keep a journal all this thing. And just right now, like, what you use, what time, what you eat that day, just how you start feeling. Eventually, you're going to start dialing in what is going to work best for you for all somewhat different, obviously. And that's been, you know, pretty positive. I, I do the same myself. Uh, I start I'm sort of kind of buying out of what for me. I'm primarily at nighttime sooner just to help me get some sleep. Um, I'll just do it to get my company blood. I'll be literally out lucky with one of our strains called Act Animal. Guys, it's very lucky to get it. Uh, I am singing Afghanistan, out the Valley, Act Animal, kind of works out. And when I get to some of the people over saying that, they freak out. They're like, what's the put in there? So I'm like, where do I have to do all? Um, and they're like, no, this thing is the exact out of this. You should be uh, working on you. You should be you for feeling, you should be up, feel good about yourself. And then the guy says, and then I tried to at any time, I got one best like scene I've ever had. And that has been essentially my go to from here on out is I always use that anvil. And I'm taking a couple of hits, or my Miami cab races to kind of finish up. I'll get through before I get fed, do a couple on hits, and then I'm out. And you know, I have to have East West, very we do it, go right back to sleep. I'll talk about Center for a couple of hours and go over his outline. So that's been not my experience. That's why I share with people who are essentially endurous. I'm kind of share a similar uh, experience to Brian. Um, I think the first time that I met Sim Cab was what was to get a nice sleep for myself. Uh, I was also a veteran from the Israeli army, so, you know, um, I had some negative experience that I wanted to forget. I can't understand that to help me with that. Uh, with that said, I want to now, you know, talk about the misconception the cannabis bit, because 
There are too many users that are over consuming cannabis. They think that it would be more effective. But some our research we see that the vegan phone research of cannabis or cannabinoid, whether it's two and a half grams of THC, a little bit over that could be very effective, go a long way. So, uh, and I see the cannabis market that is going to the THC driven market, but clients are basically getting their bang from the buck rather than just looking for a small dose to consume and just get there. I think we should aim to second, aim to, you know, not over consume and use it holistically with the medicine. And of course, if you want to get high, get high, or judgment whatsoever. You know, we have a huge red market, definitely legitimate. So if we're talking about medical use, a uh, small dose goes a long way. Yeah, I'm going to try not to get too sidetracked because this is actually my first time getting all three of these men in front of me, so I have so many questions. Uh, but kind of piggybacking off what Kyle said, finding the right screen, um, and what Dan was saying about you really sometimes only need a small dose. I think that's part of the reason we're here, right, is to have that conversation and to really help people understand that it's medicine and it can be very targeted if it's used correctly. Sometimes you have a weird experience and it might thwart you, but the perception um, is definitely changing as we want to have this conversation, it's the better. Um, I think what I want to ask you, Dan, as a follow-up is, there's kind of a two-part question. So first, obviously, the words of the Institutional Review Board are already approving this. Um, it's really major. Uh, I'd love to hear you kind of speak about the difficulties in getting these steps approved just general and kind of how to kind of overcome that. And then I also want to talk to you about, um, do you feel like there's a big challenge with dosing? How are you kind of managing that and figuring out how to really find the right, the right strain to move? I'm sorry for getting spot, but you're here. Yeah, so IRB is a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, it's enough already with the IRB it is to prove uh, 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 research uh, on humans. And unlike in the future and even uh, animal studies, so when it comes to human, safety is a major concern. So because safety is a major concern, the procedure is very, very slow, to say the least. And now when look at you know, other substances and speakable substances, um, it's relatively easier uh, to, to manage. But when it comes to cannabis, because it's a schedule of one substance, and because it's legal federally, then the IRB doesn't have the answers to all questions. They are not clear with themselves regarding the, the, the process and how it should go. So, because it's a federal law, one substance, super hard to manage it with them and uh, it's a very, very long process. Um, and it's also IM, IMD, which is stands for investigational um, new drug. And unlike other drugs, uh, cannabis is not FDA tool. So on one hand, it's uh, legal to consume and legal to buy in the state of California and other states. On the other hand, in the federal level, it's not legal. So this clash is very, very difficult to handle. And again, the IRB process is very long and could be very frustrated. Frustrated, sorry. What the other question, Sean? How do you manage dosing and figuring out the right Yeah, I mentioned it before. I would always start low and go slow. You know, it's a cliche, but it's true also for the medical and research role. Uh, so if I could talk about our current research, we uh, conduct research with uh, the University of Irvine here in California on pain management. And the first dosage that the patient gets is two and a half of THC, that's it. And for most patients, these patients have been tried cannabis for very effective. Now, if you have some experience with cannabis and obviously the tolerance is higher, then your uh, the, the, the first dose will be much higher than two and a half mm -hmm. milligrams. But, you know, the goes go low and slow, it's, it's too true. We skip follow this rule. 
It's really interesting, and I do think the adult use side of things has to start to understand, right, how many constructing big shapes this past to your point. You just go into the dispensary and you say, hey, I have this horrible vertigo. They're not going to know. That's straight to get you, right? They're just going to give you whatever they like the best. So um, hopefully we can start having these conversations and really changing uh, that switch piece. I want to segue into Candace and athletes. So obviously in the veteran community, we know uh, Candace is still a little taboo. It seems similar to the professional athlete world, obviously. A lot of athletes are drug tested, things like that. What do you feel like the overall vibe is in that in that sphere and how do you um, see us changing and combat it? Sure. Uh, well in the NFL, you know, it was up until two years ago we get the players were being uh systemically you know, fined, all this you know, all these things. And now uh, there was a, a couple of forms that they had uh, at CB Battle. I was at that. Um, I was uh, in Los Angeles a couple of years ago, wrapped with Cody. Um, and, you know, post that uh, uh, things, whatever we like, you know, and they had all the military doctors so that they gave their executive committees. And I, that people gave me presentations. I did a presentation on the categories, category assist all these things. And they said afterwards that. They would, they were kind of the customer you sat that uh, no longer would clear as we suspended uh, from using cap. So they were just going to continue testing. Uh, uh, recently this season, they came out a new one. They've been fighting against that. Uh, you know, our closures to be in the industry for a where our mouth is, where we have brands, you have Spencer's, all kinds of things. We try to really grow this uh, community uh, as Brian is and down to it. Be united in this so that we can really get this push over because it really does take everybody. I think the NFL and the sports side, it's, it's taking athletes to put their day on the block. So we've got some of the biggest names in, in sports that are advocating we'll with two of the Russo and the um, uh, progress is being made. And the NFL just came out with a new announcement to uh, that uh, just put out that they're offering about a billion dollars to study, a couple of companies to San Diego Valley, uh, Mold Valley's to study grass. Uh, uh, so, you know, there's a lot of progress being made, but they're very new still, and, and they, uh, you know, afterwards, it, it's funny to speak to doctors so when you're in front of autism, we go, we know, it's just going to take time. But like, fuck you! <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, and you're letting people die, and they have these, you know, they make it so hard to research cannabis, you know, I felt the sure I'm not sure he's raised any money, she goes by. And then uh, about my soul, and he just wouldn't be there in the face. Like, I have no idea how what's going on. And people basically should have said to me in English, but he's, he had changed. So that's what I took it. And uh, so it's just this constant over and again her situation where you have to, you know, stand up and fight. Uh, but we're, we, they, they finally have seen we're not going away, so they stopped suspending players. Now we've got to deal with the fine situation. They didn't exercise it. They said they could take up the three games, pay a guy, make him still come with winner That's top of over. And they kept moving the, 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 the THC content. You know, the IOC was at 35 data grant. So that's what the NFL went to from their government while I was 15. You know, they're a truck driver, cop, fireman, set 15 to yards. And that's because you have a flow you have on about 10 nanograms to THC in your body. And as you two smoke a joint or, you know, rouse, they know that you're participating in this. Uh, if you will then still be a tested positive at 19 nanograms with a dolphin strongly tested. So, you know, these things, why are you still happening anymore? It's still very ignorant. Uh, uh, Chief Bed Officer in a fellow has been open to it. Um, uh, he's died in Tennessee. And, you know, I, I actually live there in Gators and Nashville today. And so I'm a criminal again while I'm living in America. Uh, but, you know, not quite about it. And they just don't see the charity anymore because they don't want this press and they don't want this media to really expose the truth of this plant. Now, our fluids, you know, same lives continually. And that's what we're seeing in our community. If that's why we're focused on strange and specific cannabis and solves other things that we got as strange in there because. When I had this experience, I knew I was potential than Jim Man or Abbott or Ricky Mole sort. Because we all have these relative issues of this game. And when you have relative issues, 
uh, trauma or whatever it be, uh, when you finally put it at these resolutions, it's real likely, in my experience, that if they have that said, those same streams can work in those people. You know, that's how this was. I don't know how. Yeah, hope you win So, quick follow up. Um, obviously, there's a little progress being made, but what do you think is what can we do, right, as citizens not in the professional athlete world? Is it just getting a voice out there and attacking these people, like some people in the NFL that think she's a medical officer? Or is it more of like you need to get the right people in the room and feel like they need to have those conversations? Pretty feel like we can help. Uh, um, just yeah, you know, just fans. I mean, just need to support cannabis. That's what they need to see. You know, the more people uh, tell everyone, just take your experience and go let everybody know about it. Because then they go, I have no idea. Because you're a better person, and most cases better than them. And, and you know, they're looking for their own ways. You know, being in the day. So uh, I truly believe that. I you know as you, you stay at yeah, the, the recreational is in this as part of really. You know, put a smoke over a while that you men still with this is. That's unfortunate. That's what they want. But still, at the same time, it is saving lives that they can't do uh, that. You know, even in the, the recreational is a little bit off. Nobody's dropping death like the clock they knew with it. People are giving all these huge Instagram pages that that random you know, She's, there's some people like it. It's just their lives have been open. It's this flat. Uh, and then you have these true experiences of healthy walls that we can get back and, you know, safe time. You have to coach high school football, coach young kids, have, have mentor, all these things. Cameras didn't just say about life. We brought everything back in it. God, Jesus, religion, all these things, seeing the world. <laughs> so, you know, that's what it truly is. Don't know what it is. And that's important. I think that eventually we can get more people positive thing about rec recreational is that more people will try it. There are more people are going to have this experience and we got all well, the bad experiences and say that they don't have that bad Because that's the real fight. It's fighting against this industry, bastardizing itself, uh, you know, cannibalizing itself. Uh, we have platforms being given to people in this industry uh, that are out here with hot shower science about you know, diseases from cannabis. There's, which don't exist because you can't research, right? They don't allow them to still schedule one. So I have to come up with fucking can with cyber research center that's making everybody go, oh, somebody's going to die out of here. And you're like, no, not one soul in the history of the world. So, you know, it's awareness, but it's like this industry can help itself. I continue to get back on the path that right? this is a true medicine. It doesn't have a fucking flaw, period. So we have to do more of this. Uh, I also want to ask Dan, you mentioned the struggles with getting research done. Dan, from your perspective, um, I'm assuming I may be wrong, you did some work in Israel before you came here. So kind of what are the differences and challenges you face coming here and what are your biggest frustrations with the US? Not to hear it us more, but just to us all food for thought on what's what's going on behind the scenes and how important it is that you have to go like Dan's here ready this research. Well, as I mentioned, you know, the bureaucracy behind cannabis research is, is tough. It's also tough in Israel, by the way, not only in Israel. But Israel is more open to cannabis research compared to the US. Um, so that's one thing. I think the stigma is still there. That we're 2023 in California, we think everyone loves cannabis, everyone is still cannabis. It's not the case, unfortunately. And we see a lot of doctors, many doctors, that are still anti-cannabis. People don't want to see it as a drug. People don't want to see it as a medicine. And they don't want to uh, include it in their uh, box or tools. Uh, yeah, uh, instead of opioids or, you know, replace opioids and other harmful drugs, they don't see the benefits. And part of it is also our fault because they don't learn about the endocannabinoid system in medical school. So how can they use cannabis as a tool if they don't know how cannabis is communicating with our own bodies? So that's a major challenge. Still we see that most doctors are not into cannabis 
whatsoever. It's for sure not going to be vocal or recommend cannabis. Some of them are on the fence, and we're trying to gather those doctors that are on the fence, educate them about cannabis use, and again, show them the real data that we bring from our research. So I'm sure, Brian, that's super interesting. I'm sure you've seen a lot of similar struggles in terms of the battery community getting them to understand um, these different pieces. So thank you both for working on that. Uh, Brian, do you feel like you have anything you want to add in terms of challenges you've come up with um, that differ from the academic worlds or medicinal worlds? You know, I think for me on the veteran side, like I said, you guys, in 2016, you first released campus, and I'd say I great experience with it. Uh, I just remember when I was talking to a couple of colonels and generals about what I wanted to do, like kind of like that high eyebrow, like, like the high eyebrow, like in one foot, like two, and all that stuff. Well, it was an important thing. And as things have progressed, and you know, we were at war for 20 years, and there's still a lot of little wars going on out there, and there's going to probably be some more wars coming up here in the near future, unfortunately. But you're starting to see a large amount of narratives when they're coming back. I'm, a, I'm not to say young. You know, a lot of the veterans kind of follow the deal. It should never even back the same person. You're going to have these teammates that are going to follow them back. And what we're seeing, you know, the suicide epidemic that's plaguing the veteran community. There's one really alarming study I read back in 2021 for Boston University. It's during the global war on terrorism where we're in Iraq and Afghanistan. We lost 7,070 men that went on the battlefield. During that same period, we lost over 31,000 active duty of veterans to suicide back here in America. So essentially, it's more dangerous for me right now being here talking to you guys than it was when I was patrolling the streets of Fallujah, Iraq, or operating in the Halligan province, or being in North and West Africa. And I really start seeing those same generals and colonels are now coming back to me and saying, you guys are just ahead of the game, we got to get more going here. Uh, where they kind of started standing up. I, you know, my first battalion commander, retired school board colonel, he told me it was in a meeting in Washington, D.C., and with all these politicians, and he just said, he's like, I'm about to say something I never thought I'd ever say. Like, it's like, we need to do more canvas research, and you guys got to get a hold of my dad, Bobcat, and California, and just start talking to him and see what they're doing. They're starting to come along now, and a lot of people are very interested in not only what it can do for the veteran community, but we're also seeing some of the neural protections that THC provides. So a lot of times we get hit by blast release, whether it be able to reach into a building, we get hit by a five explosive device right there and that. A lot of guys are getting in custom it. We're ending up with traumatic brain injury roll in houses. So they call it like CPV. And people are just really struggling. But now they're seeing that essentially concussions is your brain swallowing. And they're like, literally the best thing to do at that point would be give you cannabis to go to screen swelling. And you need other recovery acts that create a little your exposure to CD or TBI. So I think we're just at the beginning of this. I think as it's time for rest, we keep our heads down to fighting and before getting the research done. I don't think you're just going to see with the veterans community. I don't think you're just going to see what patients in America. I think you're going to see the active duty forces are going to start adopting and do some micro dosing, but not be more exposed to those patients on the active duty. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see the shift, and it sounds like um, the rumblings in the military world are a little more positive than maybe the academic or the medicinal world. Um, I want to ask you a question, Dan, about um, some of the research you're working on now. I know you can't share a ton with us, but I used to work at um, a nonprofit can cancer institute out of Boston, and you mentioned how doctors are so quick to to recommend maybe other drugs and they're really uh, adamant about not recommending cannabis. On cancers to actually have an in-house chemistry lab so they could concoct drugs on site for human trials, which to me is absolute insanity, but they won't prescribe medical cannabis. So what are some of the really um, key findings you've seen and how do you feel like you can start getting some more uh, health systems involved, the research? Yeah, clinical research is um, <clears throat> tough task, but it's long, it takes time. Uh, this ongoing research that we're doing with UCI University of Irvine is over two and a half years now. Um, we expect to complete the trial there this year, maybe early next year. Um, 
There are many challenges, and one of them is recruitment. Post COVID, to recruit patients is almost impossible. Uh, but for me, there are a lot of benefits to it, as I see. Um, I look at it as a win 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 situation, not only win win. Um, first, the patients are great beneficiaries because they quit opioids and use cannabis instead. They improve their quality of life and their health, not to mention their mental health as well, which is a big one. Then the second one is the medical community. The same doctor that we just mentioned, most of them are still anti-cannabis. Now they get treat with cannabis and use it on a, day, uh, on a daily basis. So for us, it's huge to see doctors like our investigators, our nurses, our medical teams that are adopting cannabis and very thrilled to continue this research with us. So that's a big win. And the third win is, of course, for the sponsors, because they, they see the benefits, especially on, on the marketing side, when there is so much competition in the cannabis market in California, we want to stand out. And what's the best way to stand out when it comes to a medical product? Have a clinically uh, tested product that was true to help people. So once you have this truth and evidence, that's, that's a huge benefit for, for the sponsors. Any research you want to share with us? <laughs> yeah. Try to pull it out. I cannot talk about the current research. I can tell you anecdotally that we know that it's effective, it's helpful, and we know that because some of our post-trial patients are still buying the products after the trial was ended. And just to give you a better sense of it, they get the products free during the trial. So now we see many post-trial prospects of buying the product again and again. And it is effective for them. Um, on the other hand, we know that there are not as many negative side effects. It should be huge. And uh, you know, the side effect that we see is red eyes or you know, happiness or stuff like that. Or, you know, some people overconsume it. I won't, I won't deny that, but when it comes to side effects, when you compare the kind of side effects to all other drugs and opioid side effects, just in more brain. So yeah, we, we love to see the trend growing. Super exciting. Uh, and I'm just going to ask one more question for you two um, on this note, and then we can definitely open it up for questions, uh, but we'll wrap things up quickly. Um, so I know a little bit about the better community. You mentioned the people dying uh, on our soil. I know there's 22 veterans a day that are um, committing suicide or ending their lives because of um, the stress that they endure. So Brian, I want first you to talk about where you really think the resources are lacking for these military people uh, before and once they get out. But I think that I want to pass it over to Kyle and kind of get his perspective on is there enough support for the athletes during their time playing and post to have um, you guys not the their spaces. Okay, great. Um, Matt, we actually played a video. What's been helping me is really the education side of kind of informing the military of what we're doing and how we're trying to do it. And what's been really effective is this video we're going to show you here. This is kind of really what some parts of minds for us to let this play and then I'll just follow it in there. Thank I was the team manager of the Marine Special Operations 8 Wad 3 2. We would end up raids on high value uh, Taliban targets or uh, help out what we call those stability black ones. But one thing I think you'll look at in fact, I, I, I say how simplistic warfare was being out of like deployment in Afghanistan or things like that. You know, Marine Corps, stuff like that, seems kind of just so natural, uh, so simple. Um, I hate the word this word is simple, but something happens and it's do it. It's kind of weird that was nine years ago. Seems like that's the uh, unfair I have now been like in flight. It's starting out of this is the half speed of the RTR at the end of the line. It's starting out of this time. In the regular, they sound like cooking other, they do these things. I was a sad base, land out. 
there is just like do your metrics that we didn't like think about cannabis or how it worked or any of that stuff. Turf, like the business side. I'll be honest, I'll kind of turn on the facts like what we can do to help out veterans with the research side. And then also, no one really knew the rules or slide all the potential, all this stuff, but it was just kind of seemed exciting to get into an industry that was just kind of really starting on the legal side. The mission of all this called the Etsy is to get out of the campus, the Exus. And we're going to do it through our uh, IRB approved studies. See, I will have this Greek news to sit, push, and stress. And what's great about that is having the team out of Israel, my aesthetic, along with the doctors from UC Irvine. Uh, not only are we part of the battle, we have merit, doctors, validating. That's literally what I think the legislature has seen on Capitol Hill. You know, a lot more people are trying to turn on the campus and uh, more people will start to do some more research and inevitably that will lie. I've never told people that cannabis since for everyone were a very precious campus, but it should at least be told. You know, at the end of the day, all things in my high best and say best and best. <laughs> Right. So, you know, I've been seeing that after people in the military, and I think a lot of questions I get asked them, like, what do you mean warfare was simple or things of that nature? And why it was is because you're just always so present with your combat. Uh, there could be a billion things happening back in America or around the world, and it doesn't really matter to you because you're just so focused on what you have and go wrong right in front of you, and you're just totally present and dealing with those problem sets, and you find peace with that. Just it's somewhat comfortable with me. All my letters to my family were written, all that stuff, the funeral was arranged, whatever we need to be. I just had to go down to be effective and provide as well with the thousands of the ballot and have rest of the goal. Um, and what I found with cannabis and what has helped out other veterans is you know, a lot of the stuff are from things from hyper vision. It's, it's, you know, you're on patrol and your your next step could literally be your last step. My step on the ID wrong. And um, you know, it, it, it stuck me that my push max stress kind of kills this ground kids. It's all, you know, all the bad guys I killed, screw them. I would do it all over their head twice and could not hated them. They would come in this room, lop all your heads off. I'm not kidding. They were just evil and evil people. But when you see how they have the use of living in children, I kind of compartmentalized that. But as soon as I had my uh, first son, Dan, it all came back. But then when I started Mr. Candace, it just kind of slowed the things down for me and kept me present to what I need to do. It just kind of gave me an overall better quality of life. And that's why I'm so passionate about what I'm doing. I haven't taken a big check from this company, so I'm just putting everything back to the research. Because I know it's going to save lives, that's what's important. I mean, men and women, when they raise the right hand before, they're giving up their, their liberty, their freedom, all that stuff on you. And it just bothers me, I'm getting emotional right now. I just don't get why I'm not flipping every rock possible to let these uh, veterans go forward in the American dream they fall for. And so, <clears throat> that, uh, I want to talk about <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that's why I'm here. And, uh, you know, God bless all of you for being here. And it's just a great meeting. So, they keep on this meeting. You know, people like Dan, you know, we we'll meet Kyle just a little bit to each other for an event and all flowers and we're just talking. And it was just amazing how similar our experience or even in kind of world are. We were suffering. Very much the same things, just like every other patient suffering. And that's why we just put our best aboard, right? This too, right? Yeah, uh, it sounds like, and I'm sure everyone in the service is familiar, but I didn't know until I got really watched with the veteran TV the lack of resources available to our service members after they finished their um, time. Good our services. So it's crazy to me, again, for Ryan's point, that we're not doing everything we can for these people. And I'm curious, for professional athletes, I know it's very different, but do they have the mentor system during and post, or how do they navigate that space? That's something you guys talk about. Uh, you'd be surprised, I mean, it's very similar. Uh, I mean, the military takes a lot of things for professional sports and vice versa. Uh, you know, all the training facilities I went out at, I've, Training with ACL teams and Ranger teams and all these guys and put to the same special training facilities, coaching with athletes, uh, rehabbing injuries. Uh, I, Jim, I wrote out, I had a tendency to go to places like that. One of the Jim, I worked out, I went out, he was 
bunch of wounded veterans have been at Moon Lake, so they're trained for triathlons and all these other things. So, I mean, the experience that, that we each had, I mean, all the NFL guys, we had very associated or that's where, that's where I was our major sense. So, excuse no, uh, but the relative things would be having better if we had suicide, all the injuries, all the, you know, the, the damage to the body. That's really right. This is what it is. We accept it. We go and do it. I took all of her again. Right? At the same time, we had a commitment to our job. We trained for it. That's why it was easy, you know, because we were in our own. And when you take that person out of that element, it's a whole new world, right? We have to make your world now. Maybe it'll be this world. You know, that's uh, yeah, six five, three hundred and twenty pound. I didn't see what we gotta fit in this car seat and that airplane yeah. seat and you know, the, 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 gotta stand in the line just like everybody else, but you just gotta stand yeah. out, you know, a lot. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it can yeah. be real, you know, uh, cumbersome. So you know, as sport rooms go, you know, for us, done. I mean the same as military. You get yeah. over it. Tough enough, right? And that's what we were told. So, you know, as far as support groups are concerned, you know, they have things that you can go participate in. The physical will proactive approach towards all that's the problem. It's that they have all the millions of dollars allocated towards all these programs and they have all this this program. Yeah, that part of the other. I never heard about it. I played tenure in the NFL, so I held out a higher end about this. I mean, my wife had to call and find out about this after a while in the far down the street about to commit suicide and you know all these other things. Like, why are you proactively doing these things? Well, it's you know, we, it's called liability. At the end of the day, they hide behind it, you know, and uh, so they really want to, our charge is to resolve that. Ryan Steele and Navy's guys were trying to change this narrative. And, um, well, Isaac Pekin and veterans, so we've been working on for years, a decade now, more, uh, really hard. With, with military groups standing up for this, athlete groups standing up for this. Uh, you know, I was trying personally to, you know, we have been, and uh, COVID to get a temporary moment, and one of them very flattering, and uh, what they're reading about a lot of talking to around our business, and we've got a plan to hopefully develop it, working campus, even. War veterans, athletes, uh, anybody with trauma, you know, uh, will be able to apply to the you know, war academy environment, you uh, know, around round cannabis. And, uh, and uh, we build a, an operation on the CO, and we can integrate those people, walk with, you know, the real hawk raiders and know what they're doing, help her, you know, give this experience that we have that has changed our lives. You know, we don't just operate. Uh, in this space, we're embedded in this space. You know, this is our life, and we need to this. So, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's an awesome life to be in. Uh, it's a great community to be involved with. And, and um, you know, so we just continue to try to promote that on our end as athletes because it really is no uh, assistance. I mean, I don't know how many, you know, veteran friends I've lost, but I just lost one by my high school buddies because of the side journey that killed in itself. And, you know, I couldn't get to hit cannabis in him because he became a sheriff, you know. And, uh, and he's, he's still floored on being a sheriff for 16 years. And now, you know, he's gone. Now, now the CTE's that bad because he played football. And the BTS needs that bad because he killed a bunch of people and saw a bunch of crazy shit. And he's only got what? So they use uh, but alcohol or the pills. And uh, our community is seeing, you know, this just rapid job community. Um, our statistics are at all time highs. Uh, CNN approached me uh, again. You know, I, was, I was on weeds with them. Uh, Weed four uh, was all down. It's like good to them. So I got to know that they just approached me recently about wanting to do a story on the NFL and how much better it's got. And I replied, I said, I'm sorry, but you're mistaken. It's, the statistics are will prove what I'm saying to you that it is actually worse. Uh, all you gotta do is turn on TV, you look at a situation about it, I need a share, uh, Russell Wilson, all these other quarterback situations that they completely let the brain injury back on the field, right in the egg. Uh, they, they do a lot of smoking mirrors, too, at the end of the day, they kicked out the matter. And you got a, it's your responsibility. So, like the guy who continues, a lot of programs in place, but don't know about it. And they're not proactive to get into it. And when you coach them, they don't. Sorry. Can you use cannabis? That's what they're telling you. And we want you to try this. I was told that I would receive my concussion settlement because 
I've been denied five times because I show up and say, Kevin, this fucking saved my life, and I have it back now. But it's a little brain disease to deal with. It's really bad. And every scan I've taken, it says I have stage two plus dementia and a growing brain disease that is, looks like an 85 year old Alzheimer's patient on every MRI scan. They wanted to send my son when he got knocked in the head and sent to the same hospital to the emergency room because they pulled my stand from the hospital. And they were like, the ambulance is on the way. We're going to take you downtown. He's going to go. And my wife said, wait, which side of the head did you say that was on? Which well, on the right side. And my son was kind of on the left side. He said, look at this. Oh, that's your husband's stand. Oh, I'm sorry. So they told me literally after the fourth time they denied me on my concussion sub that they did, right? You know, they're throwing all this on in here. Uh, they said that um, I'm ineligible because I look too good now and I have that social media pages and businesses I'm doing and all this and that. And, and that if I would submit to winning cannabis and going to their facility in Boston or somewhere, I can't remember where it is, for 10 weeks, be admitted and get back on every fucking site that, that I was on. That's what they literally told me. Get back on every site that you were on and you get this loan, God. I go, fuck you guys. Keep it. I'll keep fighting it. I'll end up, you know, winning. I mean, I'm not trying. I don't care about this. I didn't need it. I made plenty of money. But you guys established this whole protocol where you take me out every year, twice a year for the last 10 years. I can go through this testing, the back test. Over and again to prove I have stage two progressive dementia, leading out of outside. And then they deny you, deny you, deny you just because of all these superficial things that they say uh, don't qualify, you know, because there's no way, you know, what I, I'm testing, you qualify for it completely. So again, they put on a second place, they deny you guys have disabilities, that's why there's, you know, murder rates, all the way things, and also a man has killed the doctor and six family members that worked here at Warner that deny you, you say. <laughs> Well, I did this discussion, so said he threw fire. Me knew he wasn't. And, uh, you know, I don't have any much longer I can sit in this, you know, but I'll continue to do it because cannabis saved my life. And these things are emotional for us because we see it all the time. I mean, why is it these events that tell you I was there? When he just put the gun in his head, blew his brains out, right? Some kids in the kitchen. kitchen. No, we, we get to hear these intimate stole. Junior Sale was a great friend. And so, you know, being here is why, you know, why I'm here. It's because I've committed to this discussion. Because I know he's still here if he had what I And so, you know, again, we've got to be proactive on, on pushing through this plan to really tell him what it is. Tree Edison, with the recreational, go, go find it. I mean, have your, your fun. Be whatever you want. Uh, and find it. Because once you find it, you can't deny it. And then it becomes a true medicine. And then you start to dial it in, and then start about being hot. And then ask the follower. They're like, hey. Yes. Go, Pat. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I don't, I hesitate to use the word exciting, but I think what we are doing in this room, you guys can be here having these conversations, really are at the forefront of a major change. So hopefully, um, we can. We can finally see some real progress. Unfortunately, that involves some play for being that great, but we'll help you now. And we'll help you. Uh, does anyone have any questions for the panelists? You can obviously grab them after, but if they're ready, mind that. Okay, Reese, yes, let's hear it. You might need to yell, but it's not. I'm not the way. And Brian, I bought a take off for the discharge. I remember myself from trying to complete suicide on active duty. I know what it's like to hide inside us and try to ask uh, our shit to an alcohol or 17 years of fuck up. That's my sugar. Um, on active duty, I will admit that something higher. I started to really yard off characters and half the noise. Third leaves over the wall. I was very tired. I was using what was called Adelaide like again. And see what brought me back to. Okay. One thing that I tried to find out as I only started to be a hammer kid for headness. And then with marijuana use, it's also cool that I this this think of uh, me just revisiting one drug with another. Now I have my ass, which is stupid, like, 
Well, I would always cut this side, so I'd say I'm limited to a iron butt hair wing addiction, and now I'm going to take a look at that, and I'm going to squeeze every now and then. I'm going to sleep. But I'll bet you there's an animal to you. Call that down when it comes to a barrel double or a vertical low, or any good thing like that. I'm going to quick with this. I mean, understanding and knowing that the cannabinoid system is the double water nature the system of the human body. It takes cannabis from being a better thing with the major strain in it. Our bodies are made of cannabinoids. This is a part of us. I mean, you must look at it like that. And so I've been my best person to try and change that narrative. You know, and I sat with my daughter, type one day, and then she had a moment and just came on to our family and talked. And then with these doctors for an hour and a half, the head of the neurology and the pediatric and the animal university. In Nashville, about the cannabinoid system, CDD, why my daughter's still alive, for A1C was off the charts, the same sheep. What are you doing with her? She should be dead in a coma, uh, and she's totally far off. And sore by cues, he said, we received the end of pain, now get a board. And uh, I'm just a real zoo. Really? We're hearing something about this? You know, so uh, the doctors know it, and again, just trying to continue to expose. This is the endogenous cannabinoid system, the number one regulatory system that you can buy. I'll tell you that in the doctor's office. Uh, and so you have to take it apart yourself to know what we stand in that cannabis is a part of us. This this has got the Indian plants, the herbs, 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 the book more more alive of everything, it's all in those books, everyone said. So this is a part of that said that it is not what a thing, but place of thing. It should have been from the beginning. The rest of it is has to put it in. Yeah, first, we you come up here. I have some good embarrassers right now. Um, listen, so you guys kind of all heard of a metal called the metal bottom, right? Very big deal. So the metal beneath that would be like your service cross. So it was an army cross, air force cross, or maybe the Marine Corps called a cross. And you don't find many people out there who have crosses. It's like a really, really difficult thing to do, and usually over a really shitty circumstance and get those things. This guy was a corpsman. He was with the Marine Infantry as a corpsman. I'll call them greedy side. Uh, they were caught up in a really tough situation during the initial push in Iraq. Uh, we're still fighting conventional Iraq and forces. Uh, and they got 199 other Marines and sailors that to take this bridge and were completely outnumbered. But they did look the only suit. They made it happen. They made it work. And this man right here is a worthy cross. So I think he deserved a crowd of applause for that. Just wanting to add something to the conversation. You like mentioned THC and CBD. I think you should also mention fiber cannabinoids. That's why I think the research is so important. Uh, we find that other cannabinoids such as CBDV, THCV, CBG could be very effective to either treating or curing some types of cancer. Uh, we might start a, a study uh, for cancer treatment using minor cannabinoids and some adaptogens, uh, uh, mushrooms. Um, so I think we should more talk about minor cannabinoids. Not that THC and CBD are not important. Obviously, they're very important. But minor, minor cannabinoids, I feel personally that going to uh, blow us up in the next few years and doing some um, uh, really exciting updates to the industry. Anyone else have any questions before we say our thanks? Yes. I just call you share for uh, I'm very least to your goal. I appreciate you guys wanting me to I have a house to play for a ball. Yeah, he's always with you. Yeah, talk about that later. But I'm one of those. So my dad was a eight on that, reading that. And Ronnie um, little the just the. And from 49 different medications, 21 different bills, and the bees sent this bad. Toby, 
Um, uh, why did uh, well, all the other movie battle that everyone spoke to, whatever? And growing up with that, it trickled out in the secondary effect as a child of a veteran to see your dad, who's your hero, uh, not be able to think straight, not be able to hold a career. He's one of the most intelligent people you know. Um, and they shared his own shadow. You got to wait for dad up and he chokes you out because he's scared of what they have seen in combat. And there's no help. There's no, there's no uh, medication that's out there. And so my dad, he's a wishful lead. I, I watch a little of that. It was the only thing about him. It was the only thing. It's a child of a vaccine. I appreciate the share of the story because it, it's not the so she did, because we did too, as children of veterans. And, and I'm not, I, I can't even speak to what my mom did, but just a child of that. And the trickle down is, that's my son over there. My favorite person in the world, I don't know how to play with my son. Because my dad had the audit player pain because he suffered with PTSD. Fire. Truly refers to to bad feeling there. They keep the fighting, whatever I can do. I still have this week, so I'm a little afraid, you know, of the world with this. But anything I can do or whatever it's from more, whatever you want to share, social media, whatever, please be bullet it because it means so much and trickled out there. It it hurts generation out, generation after generation. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'm seeing thank you to the three of you. We know you're kind of putting your babies and your necks on the line for this cause, and we all are so appreciative. So, you guys see anyone um, walking around after we treat Brad up and talk to them? Got a lot of things going in the works, and hopefully, a lot more research coming your way. Thanks, guys.